We got it. What's up, crew? Finally figured out. Sorry, we're here late. I was trying to. And uh, we got a fun shoulder day today. So we'll crush some shoulders. Shoulders like boulders. I am pretty smoked after yesterday's back day. I'll tell you that much. Um, that was hard. I'm feeling it. Even when I breathe, I can feel the, uh, the lats and everything. That was just a, a lot of a lot yesterday. Plus, I jumped into a workout with Camille immediately after. Double, double the work. Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, okay, let's see here. Done. Uh, let's get out of there. Let's go live. Go live. All right. Let's see if I can put this camera somewhere where it works well. Sweet. Okay, so we got three folks in. I'll let you guys kind of file in and get ready. Today is shoulder day. Um, so we're going to go through a series of some really cool overhead exercises. Um, we're going to do some supersets with some different types of reverse flies and kind of uh, ancillary shoulder work for um, some of the finer muscle groups in the shoulder. And then we're gonna do some heavy shrugs. I know you guys like the traps. Your neck is kind of like your business card because you're wearing it all the time. Um, and then uh, and then finally, we're gonna end with a, a high pull a high pull burnout with some cables or some bands. So I'm gonna show you kind of like the, uh, the ins and outs of that and how you can do it with, with different types of equipment Depending on what you're working with at home, I'm just going to try to get this camera in line with everybody so I can look in pretty much the same direction. Um, yeah, so uh, this one will be good. So we'll let a couple more folks file in. Looks like we got a bunch of people on Instagram Live tuning into our feed. Um, we got some folks uh, on YouTube Live that were pretty consistent on YouTube Live every single day. Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern, we're doing these workouts on, on uh, YouTube Live and on Instagram Live. So we just wanted to provide like a regular time. But the cool thing with Instagram Live is that if you did miss the workout, you can tune in like later in the day or you can even archive the workout and save it for later. Um, all the stuff we're doing is minimal equipment. So, I mean, I, I have um, dumbbells. Like I think a lot of people out there have about a set of dumbbells. Um, and what I'm going to do is show you how to get a lot out of those dumbbells um, using different rep ranges, using different types of methods and tempos, um, also kind of incorporating them or combining with band work. Um, this workout we're doing today is an adaptation of our program, Muscle Anarchy, which uses advanced bodybuilding concepts uh, combined with functional movements and just the basic type of equipment you find in a functional gym like barbells and dumbbells and maybe a pull-up bar. So um, so it's kind of a combination of, of form and function, you know, uh, being able to bridge the gap between aesthetics and performance or really just, you know, I think for most people what they understand it as is it's like a hybrid of, of CrossFit and bodybuilding. Um, I go through just the hypertrophy work with you guys because that does take a while. We do a really good hypertrophy session. It usually lasts 45 minutes to a full hour. I like to go the full hour with hypertrophy. And then, uh, and then there's conditioning workouts that are included that I don't do with you on here, but um, they're on the full program. So sweet, welcome. Let's start going through a warm up um, just to get you guys nice and loose and ready to rock here. So we're gonna go overhead. So I'd like to do a series of just uh, overhead kind of preparatory work to get you lined up so that you're ready to rock once we start uh, slinging some weight around. So first thing I want you to do is just grab a towel. And uh, well, this one is, it's not too wet. Okay, <laughs> grab a towel. Gonna go on the ground. And you're gonna perform a, a movement called a reach roll lift. This is kind of a therapeutic movement, really good for building stability and strength in the rotator cuff. If you guys have ever had a shoulder injury, you may have done a variation of this before. But we're gonna do a couple. It's a really simple movement where you're just gonna go on the ground. You can be kneeling or you can be lying. I'm gonna show it to you lying. And what I like to do is come on down and take your fist. You guys see me here? Yeah, you can. Okay, so you're gonna take your fist and you're gonna put it underneath your head. Then you're gonna crawl out with your fingers, that's the reach. You're gonna roll up with your thumb, that's the roll. And then you're gonna lift. And you'll get about 10 reps here of a reach, roll, lift. Yeah. 
hyperventilating after the, the first exercise. All right, second one. So again, forehead goes down here. I'll try to tilt you guys down just so you can see. So make sure you're getting a, a good view of what's going on here. Sorry about that. We'll get you a little bit lower. And uh, this will be the other arm, reach, roll, lift. And what you're doing is you're taking your shoulder out of retraction and then just lifting with the group your, your, uh, your muscles around your rotator cuff. So it's getting the rotator cuff muscles stronger and activated. Okay, tiny jump, pretty easy right here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to some posterior cuff work and uh, it's a stretch. I think you guys, we might've done this this past week on, uh, on our, our, our chest day. This is called the sleeper stretch. So it's a really great movement for stretching out the shoulder and working out a lot of impingements as your shoulders roll forward. It tends to kind of create some imbalances. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with your elbow at shoulder height I want you to begin by pulling your shoulders down and back. So you're going to actually pinch your cap wheel a little bit together so it's locked in nice and tight. And then you're going to roll onto the shoulder. So that kind of secures the shoulder down. And from here, you're going to bring the arm down to the ground and back up. And I'm just giving a eight, nine, uh, you can really feel it at that end range. Nine, and 10. Good. Switch arms. So a posterior cuff stretch, sleeper stretch on the left arm now. So we're going to come down, roll on. See how I, how I start the movement by tucking my shoulder in, right? So the very first movement, I don't want to let my scapula wing out. So I'm going to tuck it down and then I'm going to roll on top of it. So it's nice and secure. That forces the movement to come not from the scapula, but right from the shoulder. I think this arm's a little more flexible. It makes sense with my pitching arm, so developed a lot of flexibility over those 20 years of playing baseball. Just a little pressure at the very end of the movement. And then hold, breathe out, relax. You're kind of seeing how low you can get it to the ground. If you get it to touch the ground, that's good. But most people who do that are not doing the stretch properly. <laughs> good. Oh, a little back crack. Oh, it's like that. Okay, cool. Come on up. So now we're going to do some more activation stuff for the shoulders. You guys know I really like this, uh, this one. I do it a ton. For most upper body days, it's a simple one, the band and pull apart. So I'm going to take my band on both ends, and I'm going to perform 20 reps as I pull the band from eye height down to chest height. Okay, I'm keeping my arms straight, and I'm just working from the shoulder as I do this. So I'm going to get 20 here, then I'm going to get 20 behind the neck, then I'm going to flip my palms over, and I'm going to get 20 with my arms really externally rotated. So let's go ahead and we'll just get the, uh, the shoulder hot here. And uh, you know, today, because I only want to go through two rounds of this, let's get 25 at each, at, each, um, at each level, right? So I want it to burn a little bit, just so we're getting hot. Good, right to overhead now. Palms up on this one. This is the hardest one. Nice. Okay, one round up. We do one more round of that, and then we'll be ready to rock. So, gonna go back to the ground to the reach roll lift. 
Make sure you guys can see me down there in the towel streak. And this one is the one you really want to kind of pay attention to and make sure you're feeling your shoulder climb out of retraction as you as it comes forward. So if you watch my hands, they, they kind of crawl like a spider as I crawl, reach, roll the thumb, that's the roll, lift. Posterior cuff stretch. So again, down on the ground, you're going to begin by tucking your shoulder down and back, elbows at shoulder height, roll feet. Shoulder tucks, right on top. Posterior cuff, what we're working is internal rotation of the arm. Good. Up. Pull bars. Same deal, 25, 25, and 25. Tilt you guys up so you can see. So, this is part of our shoulder prep for shoulder day today. So, we're just getting hot right now. 25 reps at eye height. Five reps behind the neck. Twenty five reps with the palms up. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, cool. So we're gonna start going through our dumbbell anarchy shoulder day. Today we're gonna have push press. We're gonna have an Arnold press reverse fly combo superset. We're gonna do some heavy shrugs, and then we're gonna end with high rep high pulls. Um, so this is an adaptation of our dumbbell anarchy program, which literally uses just a, a set of dumbbells and some bands. So you know, with three sets of dumbbells, light, medium, and heavy, and three sets of band tension, light, medium, and heavy you have 30 potential pairs of dumbbells that you can uh, create by adding band tension, stuff like that. Today I'm gonna to show you how to kind of work with equipment depending on what you have. Um, we'll talk about if you are limited in weight, how to get the most out of that in terms of playing around with tempos and playing around with repetitions. So the first movement is gonna be a push press. You guys are all familiar with that. So the push press, I'll just tilt you guys down a hair so you can see me. Get my towel out of the way. So the push press is pretty simple. It's just a dip, a drive, and then a press to the full movement. It's right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do descending reps with, with negative tempos. So the first set's gonna be 15, and we're gonna push press up, and then a three second negative down. So we're really working the negative. As we start to progress, we're gonna add some weight and maybe reduce some reps. If you guys are limited in weight, what I want you to do is try to find that rep range that is really challenging for you, and we'll try to sustain that through the five working sets. 
will take anywhere from 90 seconds to maybe two minutes between the sets, depending on how hard it is. And we're going to get increasingly harder and harder as we go. So um, let me grab my dumbbells for the first set. So I got this bench here. I like to use the bench just to prop the weights up on. So I'm going to start with not, not a crazy heavy set of dumbbells, you know, for the first set. Just kind of get familiar with the movement. First set's a little bit of a warm up side. Here's my push press. doing is we're slowing down the tempo through the negative to try to get some good muscle micro tearing. So that was our first set, just kind of a higher rep set there. I might go one more set it that way and then probably bump the weight up for the next ones as we start bringing the, the repetitions down. Uh, this is the shoulder day and uh, yeah, the point of the day is to pump the shoulders out a little bit. We did a, a lot of heavy pressing, high reps into the 10 second tempos. And then we had um, drop sets of 50% for double, flat press anarchy, working different ranges of motion. Um, we had banded push up supersets. Um, and then we even ended with some dip stuff. So, all right, so let's go set two. Same deal, but instead of 15, I want you guys to go for a set of 12. So you're going to go for the, the last few reps are challenging. All right. Here we go. And out. Yep. Nice. Set number two. Crushing it. Take a little break, grab a little free workout in here. So these are push press with tempos. We're doing it with dumbbells, although in our um, in our muscle anarchy group, and muscle anarchy is for people that do have more of a comprehensive equipment set with like maybe a set of barbells, um, maybe a pull-up bar, things like that. Um, they're doing the same thing, but with a uh, but with a, a barbell. And I believe there's no tempo in that one for them because I want them to actually get heavy because uh, they can there. I think most people with dumbbells, the biggest limiting factor is just the weight they have. So we can make it challenging in a different way by adding a tempo or adding repetitions. Um, but, you know, if, if you do have the ability to load heavy, that's always an advantage. So that was our set of 12. Now we're going to get heavier. So we're going to bump the weight up a little bit. So. I'm going to move up. I'm actually going to almost double the weight on this one. And um, we're going to go to a set of 10. So this is going to be a good hard 10 with that tempo going down. Um, set three of our push press anarchy. And just kind of get myself situated with the weight right now. So I'm going to put these guys away. I'm actually going to end up using these a little bit later for our last drop set for our last drop. But these will be nasty. So get in there. So we're going about 30 seconds. One of the things that is different about our program versus like any traditional maybe crosser program is that the focus is on muscle hypertrophy. So the movements are similar. But, you know, if you were doing a push press and a crossfit workout, you might be moving as fast as you could um, with little regard to, you know, how slow and controlled you're bringing the movement down or even less regard to, like, your positioning and attacking specific muscle groups. We use the same movements, 
but it's much more intentional. Um, there are tempos. We only go as heavy as we can maintain the proper position because one, orthopedic safety, like that really enhances getting out of position, usually is an analog to, to injury. And, um, and two, um, creating a good mind-muscle connection where you're working the muscles in a very intentional way to get them to grow without kind of kicking or cheating the pattern um, in any type of way. And that goes for all, all the movements, whether it's an isolation movement like a bicep curl, or something compound like a push press. Um, all right, so here we go. Let's get it, Dave. Come on now, big cat. Here we go. A lot heavier. Whip. Yes, sir. Sorry. Good. After that, woo, glad we did all those shoulder warm-ups before. So we got, oh, nice, got a bunch of people on YouTube doing this with us. Got a bunch of people on Instagram Live kind of following along. Um, this is Dumbbell Anarchy Shoulder Day. That was set number three. So what we're going to do, now that we're kind of in the sweet spot, we're in the zone, and in terms of hypertrophy, that eight to 12 repetition range is the zone <laughs> that you want to be in. You know, kind of that 60 to 80% loading range. Um, so we're going to live here now for the next three sets. We're going to do one more set of 10. And then the last set, or two, the next two sets, uh, and the last set is going to be a drop set. We're going to go into 10. Then we're going to drop the weight and do 10 more. Uh, to get kind of close to failure there. So that was good. Take a little breath, collect yourself. Like I said, if you're limited in dumbbell weight, if you don't have a good pair of, you know, um, 60s, 70s, or 80 pound dumbbells or something like this, what you can do is you can just keep your reps higher. So maybe you stick with the 15s through the five set as long as the last couple reps are challenging. That's the muscles telling you that they don't like it and that this is something different. Um, and it's also where a lot of the adaptation lies. Because if you you stay comfortable, usually nothing's happening, right? I tell people that with nutrition. Like if you're comfortable with your nutrition and you're trying to lose weight or gain weight, it's probably not doing much for you. You really have to push the food to gain weight. You really have to restrict the food to, to lose weight in a compelling way. And then the same thing is with training. Like you gotta, you gotta get the stress response. Specific adaptations to impose demands. All right. Another side of 10 here. Gee, I, I wanted to feel that actually. I like that. It's nice and challenging those last few reps, but good load, good rhythm. All right, here we go. folks you know those shoulders getting pumped out a little now which is good I like to get that even a stretch like this if you take your palm back your palm back your head put it on your lower back and posture up it's a nice shoulder stretch for the posterior cuff I'll sometimes do that in the car I'm sitting in the car and I'm like when I get something out of it I'll put my hand behind my back as I'm driving just to stretch out the shoulder Maybe in a little multitasking is that what you can call it <laughs> So that was set number two, or excuse me, that was set number four. Set number five is going to be a doozy now. So the next one, we're going to go for 10. Same thing, 10 heavy with a three count. Then you're going to grab your next light, this light set. Um, I recommend picking a weight about 30% lighter 
But if you don't have a wig that's 30% lighter, like my, my next weight is almost half of what I was doing there. So that's okay. It's just a drop. It should be less weight. And then you're going to start to rep out and you're going to try to get close to failure. Tempo is on the first 10. So for the first 10, stick with the tempo, make it nice and hard, then drop your weight. And then as you go to the lighter weight, no tempo. And I just want you to try to get close to fail. You don't have to control the weight down too much. Uh, just want to pump your shoulders out before we move on to the next exercise. Woo! I'm liking it. We're going about 20 seconds. I feel like time goes by really fast when you don't really want to lift. <laughs> or when the weight's a little intimidating. All right, check it out. Some good reps in here. Here we go. Okay, lighter set now. No tempo on these next ones. Shake it out, take a breath, lighter weight. Yeah. First exercise done. All right. So that was her first main piece there. Push press with tempos. Little drop set at the end. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to a seated Arnold press and we're going to superset that with a reverse fly. So let me put these weights away and get the seat set up. I'll talk to you about how to set this up if you don't have a bench. Okay, so if you have a bench and it's a flat bench, you can just sit on the bench upright. So that will look like this. I'll show you. You have a flat bench here. You can just sit right here. And when you perform the Arnold press, what you're going to do is with a nice, big, strong posture, you're going to start with the bells nice and low and tight. You're going to press and come down. There's no tempo. We're just going to go nice and smooth. You're going to get a 15 right there. Uh, if you don't have a bench at all, you can do this seated on a chair if you needed to. Um, or you could do it standing, but I recommend the seated position um, just because it's going to limit any kind of laxity in your whole system, any wiggling through the middle of your body, just being nice and grounded, very isolated for the shoulders. If you have a bench like I do that adjusts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump it up to a seated support. And what this does is it farther isolates the movement so that I can't lean back if it starts getting too hard. Right? So I'm going to be right here and I'm going to perform my Arnold presses right here uh, just for that set of 15. What you're going to do is you're going to do a set of 15 with the Arnold press and then you're going to immediately go into a reverse fly. So for the reverse fly, what I like to do is you can do this flat or you can do this um, on an incline. I prefer the incline. Okay. So for the reverse fly, you'll be in the chest supported position right here and you're going to fly the arms out just like this. So it's literally a chest fly, but in reverse. So instead of pulling in, you're pushing out. Now, some things I want you to see just with my arm. As I do this, 
You don't have to keep your arms straight. Bend them a little and try to put your focus around your scapula in your back so you can feel the scapula working as you're lifting up. Watch how my back, even as I do this, watch how my back arches. So I know we just did a bunch of chest supported rows yesterday. It's kind of similar, but instead of just rowing the weight, we're coming out with it and trying to get into the shoulder. Lightweight for this. You know, my first set, I might use even the, the, the 10 pound chips. It's gonna be 15 Arnold press into 20 reverse flies. Um, so higher rep stuff. Let's just see how it feels the first set and then we can start to make determinations. We're gonna to try to live here for about four total sets. So good amount of volume, we're gonna be able to get in here. So set yourself up with whatever you got, whether it's your bench, and maybe I can set this up on my big angle so you guys can see. Let you guys get a look at the angle as I do this. I'm gonna grab my chip plates here. Oh yeah, and the chips. Cool. And I'm gonna set this up so that I can go right to one to the other. So my chips are gonna stay back here. The way we have this written in our program is actually a banded reverse fly facing up. So if you were lying flat on the bench, facing up at the ceiling, we have athletes connect bands to their pull-up racks and they do the reverse fly like that, almost pulling down towards the ground. Because most people that are doing this probably don't have a hookup like that. We're kind of dumbing it down and make it as accessible as possible. So those are some options. So let's get our 15 first. Just kind of feel these out. This is again, it's just you're trying to just get a shoulder pump here. We already did some good lifting. So we're just trying to pump out the shoulders a little. My incline, or my, <laughs> I'm going to put it down to a low incline, and I'm going to perform my flop reverse flies right here. So, grab my chips. I try to really think about the back of the shoulder on these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah. Good. Woo. Nice. All right. One set done. So that was the Arnold Press reverse fly superset combo. Uh, we went 15 into 20. And uh, I'm using the bench with the upright support. You can do it seated flat on a bench just like this or seated on a chair if you are at home. Another thing you could do is, you know, let's say you have a set of dumbbells and the dumbbells are too heavy, right? So if you're like, you're doing this and let's say maybe you're somebody out there that, you know, can't really press the 50s overhead um, with both arms. What you could do is instead of trying to press both, you could grab it on both ends too and perform your presses here. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to manipulate the weight. Another way that I've done this as well is I've actually added bands on the ground, I'll just anchor the bands to maybe like another set of bells or even just uh, around the back of the bench here underneath. And you can get band resistance on top of that weighted resistance. So lots of different ways to, to hit it. We're going about 30 seconds, set number two. You guys did well with that first set. Bump the weight up a little bit. Try to make it so those last couple reverse flies are very challenging. Florida is hot. Okay. Uh, sometimes I miss my home. <laughs> we just kind of ended up down here and I started thinking about home and missing it and everything, but you guys make it a lot better. Just being able to be here and be with you makes it 
makes me forget a little. Okay, cool. So let's get it 15 nice and smooth. Pump out my shoulders. One, two, Coming down now, so I'm going to bring my incline back down to a low incline, grab my chips and get my 20 reverse flies. getting pumpy that was set two of four um so for you guys following we're going through our dumbbell anarchy shoulder day first we had was some push press with tempos now we're doing an arnold press reverse fly superset after this we've got some shrugs and some high pulls so yeah i mean uh shit this stuff is pretty fun <laughs> it's funny because I don't know if it's because you guys are here or because it's hot in Florida, but I am huffing and puffing pretty good during these sessions. Like, there's no point where my heart rate is completely down to normal. It's elevated the entire time, probably because I want to keep you guys going and keep the rest periods as short as they need to be for time's sake. Speaking of time, let's go and see how we're doing here. We are, um, oh, 1041, perfect. Right on time. All right, so next one, same deal. You know, when I say the tempo is smooth, a good reference for smooth is a two count, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's a, that's a pretty smooth rep. Once you start going faster than that, or also moving inconsistently, right? Because what people will do is they may be smooth on the way up and they'll start smooth on the way down and drop. Keep it consistent so you're keeping the tension on the muscle really well. Um, back up, chest, let's get these 15, here we go, let's in, all right, kick them up, and smooth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, First fly. So flatten out that bench. You can also do this flat. I'm doing it on the incline. Grab a chip weight here. Put my tight pants on. And reverse fly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice. Set three. Good job. So, kind of on the home stretch here. One more set of this super set, and then we'll move on. And I think what I might do with you guys is actually pull together our last two exercises into another super set. So, instead of doing the shrugs, and the high pull separately, what I might do is bunch them together where you're going to hit 
heavy shrugs into high rep high calls, uh, just for time's sake, just to make sure that we're able to kind of get it all in, in the hour. I know being time efficient is important. Everyone's got stuff to do. Even if you don't have stuff to do, you probably got stuff to do. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Ooh. this pre-workout goes really fast. Holy cow. I think it's just because it's hot here. Like I, I was losing so much water all the time. Uh, and the crazy thing is I'm losing all this water all day and somehow I'm still gaining weight. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe it's because my training volume is going up because I'm training hard with you guys every day and then doing a second session. Um, all right. So last set, 15 smooth Arnold press into the 20 reverse flies. Um, on this set, guys, what I want you to do is if you're doing 15 with the Arnold press and it's not a big deal, I want you to push it a little more. Maybe instead of 15 reps, maybe get closer to 20. Um, in all these last sets, I really like you to try to, in some ways, cash out the muscle group or really go for it. Just like you do the drop set on the push press. Uh, try to make this one hurt a little bit, you know, because that's where the growth is. So you can get the Arnold press combo here. Let's put it down. Propping my bench up, seated in position. Oh man, if you could work out with anybody, who'd you want to work out with? I think I'd want to work out with like Bill Murray. I think he'd be fun. Oh, okay. Whew, the shirt is wet. There we go. Smooth, buddy. Come on, keep it smooth. One, two. shoulders a little bit. All right. Come on, listen. Let's go. I'm going to 30. All right. Yeah. Three. Eight. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. Yeah, I just added some reps in that last set um, just to get just to get something real good out of it. Oh, cool. Good job, guys. All right, so that was second exercise, super set of Arnold press and reverse fly. And like I said, like in that last set, I like to try to cash out hard um, with that last set. So um, I, instead of doing 15, I did 20 on the press. Instead of doing 20, I did 30, just to really get into those muscles, make it hurt. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move to our last super set. It's going to be a combo of heavy dumbbell shrugs and banded high pulls. So what I want you guys to do is find a way you can shrug. My goal with the shrugs is maybe 15 reps. I'm going to strap in. But if you don't have a heavy weight, do more. <laughs> you know, if the weight's not heavy, maybe do 30 instead of 15 to the point where it's really starting to burn your traps. Then you're going to put the dumbbells down and you're going to grab a band. So with the band... And I'll tilt you guys down so you can see. With the band, it's going to go underneath your feet, right? You can also tie it to a rack if you wanted to. And you're going to perform a banded high pull just driving your elbows up. And it's going to be 30 reps of a banded high pull. 
after those shrugs. So the goal here is going heavy into metabolic stress, into high rep stuff. We're gonna go for four sets. So same deal, four good working sets. I'll get myself set up here and put this bench down, put my chips out of the way, and grab some heavier dumbbells and use those for the shrugs. And kind of show you here. Pull this out so you guys can get a view of how this is going to get done. Um, also, see, I can hook it to the rack there. I like a little bit of that 45 degree with uh, with the banded high pole, so I think I'm going to go low here um, with this, and I'll see if I can get about that 45 degree angle. So as I'm pulling, yeah, I come right here. Or I can step on it. You know, I'll step on it. Just make sure. <laughs> I don't know why I'm fucking around with this stuff right now. Um, all right, so we got some heavy dumbbells. Big dogs. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good. Give me a good heavy, heavy weight right there. For the shrug, a couple things to think about. One, I know it's hard, try to focus on keeping your arms straight and just moving from the shoulder. So a lot of people try to do the shrug like this. See, I'm kind of pulling. Try to keep them straight. But what I'm gonna do is I like using straps with these so I can really relax my grip and just move from the shoulder. So on this one here, I'm gonna come right here to this guy. I'm also gonna belt up just because coming off of stuff like back surgery, whenever I start to load the back, I like to be very aware of the position. I can feel any position changes happening. This belt gives me good feedback. It's letting me know if anything's shifting around or uh, if the spine's starting to flex at all. And let me pull the band here so you guys can see. All right, so it's gonna be 15 into 30. I'll try to face you on the shrug so you can get a good view of what it looks like. And uh, like I said, these straps are it's not because I have to use them, but it enhances the ability to relax your grip so you can move from the shoulder a little bit more. Uh, if you have them, smoke them if you got them, you know? Wow. Nice and tight. This guy in there, nice and tight. Okay, here we go. Nice and long with the arms. Good, 15, place this down, unwrap, go right to my band, just step it on my band, and now we're gonna go to the 30 high pulls. You can get your hands a little wider too. Oh yeah, Woo. trapped out there. That's a lot of traps. Nice, cool. Not bad, man. Not bad. So for this next one, I might, I might try a little bit of a heavier band. I think, um, just to, yeah. This was this was hard, but the tension wasn't super hot. But it was getting really pumpy at the end. Uh, about ninety seconds rest. Like I said, if you don't have heavy dumbbells for the shrugs, maybe instead of 15 reps, maybe it's 30 reps of shrugs into the, the 30 high pulls. Um, this was kind of a light tension band. I think next set, I'm gonna go with the medium tension. This is one of our thunder bands, and we actually write the tension on it. So for this one, this gives you between 35 and 85 pounds of extra tension. So 
that's pretty good. You know, it's probably similar to like a like set of 35, 25, 35 pound dumbbells. Um, so that should work really well. We go set number two. Those shrugs were good. I didn't really feel them. And I, my focus on those shrugs was just trying to keep my arms straight and just keep my, my, my grip relaxed. You know, it, it's not really like, yeah, like getting heavy is great, but you also want to be able to work the muscles specifically. So the, the mechanics of it uh, become important just in terms of how you're doing it. Whew. I actually feel this one out. See, see what it's like. I think this is going to be a lot more tension, which is good. But, oh, yeah, that's going to be hard. Cool. Uh, so about 30 seconds. We'll do another set. Again, we're going 15 heavy shrugs into 30 banded high pulls. Cash it out on shoulder day with dumbbell anarchy. This was just kind of shoulder girl stuff. And, you know, actually, I, really the hardest days of this week are behind us now, which is great. You know, like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are really hard days with legs, chest, and back. Um, this stuff now is kind of smaller muscle groups, so it's, it's not as bad. It's still, still pretty hard, but it's almost a nice mental break because, you know, you know, it's not going to be so intimidating and hurt you in your soul quite as much as, like, uh, leg day does. Maybe chest day. Chest day is really fucking hard. Uh, all right, here we go. Strap it in. Nice and tight. Gonna really focus on feeling my traps, keeping my arms long. Okay, here we go. High pull, couple breaths, 30 minute high pulls here. A little more tension on this set for me. are getting pumped out. Set number two, that's halfway there. Huh. I really think we tied this perfectly. I'm glad we bunched these together and super set together because uh, I want to keep you guys for more than an hour and get pretty comprehensive stuff right off the bat with our warm-ups and things. So, that's good. Huh. Let's kind of check out see where we're at here. Oh, good. 10.56. So two more sets. We'll go in about a minute to the next set. So you guys are tuning in. We got a really great Instagram live coming up tonight with one of my good buddies, Scott Dennis. He's an IFBB pro and an Olympia competitor. Uh, so for those of you guys who aren't familiar with like pro bodybuilding, the Olympia is kind of like the world series of bodybuilding. Um, it's one of the best bodybuilders in the world to show up to compete. It's very hard. Just to get there, just like, you know, Major League Pro Series, it's really hard just to get there. Um, this guy is a physique competitor. So, you know, what's cool about physique is that it's still a very athletic-looking body type. The physique guys are not enormous. They're only graded on their upper bodies, but a lot of them still do train lower body. I think the physique guys tend to train a little bit more athletically, too. Um, it's really just about a well-muscled male. So kind of like if you thought about like a muscular crossfitter, you know, I'm probably close to a physique size uh, in those categories. You know, I'm 5'11", 245 pound dude. Um, so um, he is not only one of the best in the world at physique, but he's also uh, got a full-time job as a financial manager too. So Scott Dennis is going to come on with us tonight. I believe we're doing that a little bit after 8 o'clock. And he's going to talk all things about how to create an insane looking physique because this guy has pushed it at the highest level. Um, a lot of the principles that we use at Thunder Bro, uh, Muscle Anarchy, even like today in Dumbbell Anarchy, he's been doing this stuff for years and years 
um, and has great experience, also has great experience with diving. Um, so uh, tune into that conversation tonight. We're going to promote it a little bit. I've got a bumper I'm going to tease it out with. Um, Scott Dennis, look him up, really popular dude in the world of bodybuilding, and I'm really happy to bring him to you guys to kind of um, give you exposure to some, some of the best people in, in, the, in the field. All right, no more talking. Third set. Okay, so strap it in nice and tight. Grip is going to stay loose. Arms are going to stay long. Staying with this medium tension band, 30, 15 into 30, pumping it out to finish today. One more set to go. I'm excited. You guys on Instagram Live, you're going to lose me in about two minutes, but thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned tonight for our conversation with IFBB Pro Scott Dennis, Olympia competitor. Um, he's going to talk about how to create an insane looking physique and share a lot of these secrets that only the pros know about in practice. So I'm really excited to bring him that information. You guys, if this cuts out, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Shoulder day from Dumbbell Anarchy. You guys stay in it. We're almost done. So just got a little bit more here. And uh, probably just going to end this live. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you. Okay. All right. End of the live. Sharing to the story. Woo. Yeah. It's good, man. I like shoulder day. It's actually a nice regen. You know, like I just like to kind of bring the shoulders back. You can help me. A lot of prehab exercises. Um, so yeah, this is good. Um, whew. definitely very wet. <laughs> definitely getting really wet here. All right. Let's just bang it out guys. Let's just get through it. We're almost there. Hey, last 15. I don't know if I'm talking to you or if I'm just kind of talking to myself on this. All right. Good shoulder day today. Let's finish on a good note. Finish strong. Work hard. Come on now. Get something out of it. So I was telling myself, get something out of it. One, two. Yeah. Good. Down. There we go. Right to the band. Make it hurt. Here we go. Come on, babe. I love it when it's done. <laughs> All right, guys. Good work. Hey, if anybody out there is still doing this, uh, if you finish up your set, uh, feel free when you're done to submit a question below. Oh, I got some questions here. Um, let me pull out a chair and I'll just answer them. And, uh, you know, one of the things I like about Zoom is getting to talk to you guys, but uh, YouTube Live just gives us the ability to reach more people. So if we want to converse, you can do it on the questions. You just submit right on the right hand side of the screen where it says say something write in a question right now and I'll, I'll take a couple minutes and just answer for you guys um, 
and it could be could be anything um, training related nutrition related uh, you name it so I'll start running through some of these questions um, just so you guys if you are chilling right now you could recover and uh, catch your breath like me I'm really sweaty okay hey Dave do you condition every day no um, I don't condition every day uh, for two reasons one uh, right now my goal is accumulation so I'm trying to add muscle mass so I reduce the conditioning um, just a little bit because I want to make sure that I'm not crossing up those anabolic and catabolic signals too much I try to just pound pound the food get a good amount of protein get a good amount of calories um, and uh, and almost limit the conditioning somewhat so I don't do the conditioning workout every day but I, I will do it a couple times a week the second thing I do uh, reason why is because I'm already at, at a relatively workable level of body fat. If I was a lot puffier than I am right now, I would probably condition more because the puffier you get, the longer it's going to take you to cut. So I try to stay within that 7 to 10% body fat range while I'm accumulating uh, and trying to build muscle. And then when I cut, then I try to get down between 4 and 5. Um, so yeah, like uh, it, it just depends on on the context of who you are and what your goals are right now my goal is to build muscle and i don't i don't really need to um, condition the same way say somebody with like 15 or to 30 percent body fat would probably want to bring that down uh, just to kind of stay in a relatively good workable level of body fat um you and camille were a level one since 2012 love the content thank you last night's dvr was brutal awesome it was uh, yesterday was a uh, back day and I knew, I knew it. I knew that was gonna be hard when I wrote it. I'm like, this is a, this is a lot of volume today, but it's okay. Cause looking back at the weeks prior, we didn't have volume like that. So, um, I like to undulate the program. What undulating means is you're, you're always kind of changing. It's not linear. It's not like one week is 10, the next week is 12, the next week is 15, but one week might be heavy. One week might be high volume. One week might be supersets. One week might be more tempos. Um, so it, it allows athletes to avoid accommodation and accommodation is where your body is just used to what it's getting so often that it doesn't feel any need to adapt. Um, so it's, it's a good way to kind of avoid because everyone's on a different schedule and started at a different time. You know, if everyone started at the same time and was on this linear progression, I could load them up for three weeks and then deload them and load them up for three weeks and then deload them. But I found that that works a lot less effectively than just keeping the program undulating. Um, and, and also listening to your body. You know, like when I'm doing this stuff, if I'm like, I think I need to chill out this week, I'll do a deload week. And even in our program, about every six weeks, we'll do a deload week where it's just like, hey, just take it easy. We'll practice movement. And then usually the deload week is followed by a testing week where we're actually going to test some of your numbers because we give you time to recover. Um, okay. I'm about to finish 30 day shred. Can I start the next 30 day shred? Yeah, I think it's a good idea because um, our Thundercuts program is a nine week program. The 30 day shred program is all, all about four, four weeks, obviously it's a month, right? So um, I think a good cut is anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks. Like, you know, if I'm cutting down for a show, I want to give myself that much time because if you try to go any quicker than that, either you won't hit your mark or it'll be too extreme to the point where you like lose muscle mass. So I think a, a cut should be progressive and a little bit longer. I like that, that about the three month mark. Um, is a really good time for a cut. So like, you know, if you were doing the 30 day shred, continue and continue on that progression uh, where we're kind of reducing calories and incrementally raising uh, training volume. And then there'll be a point where you're just there and we can try to help you live there as long as you need to. And I like it and try to cut up for the summer, you know, so I'm going to jump in the next 30 day shred, which is going to launch April 20th. So it's in a couple of weeks. I'm going to get on that and I'm going to share all the info as to how I'm doing that with you guys. Um, you know, it's just kind of a, a look into the program, but I'm going to be living it with you. So jump into the next shred for sure. Um, okay. Are you open to one-on-one -on -one training options soon? Um, so we're doing one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching for training. I feel like that is a lot less valuable than nutrition because most people don't need a specialized training program. They just need good variety and a good foundation, right? Like they, they need to learn tempos and do a variety of movements. And if there is any specialization, usually that comes in the form of maybe special exercises 
that can be uh, preventative or therapeutic. Like if I have a bad back, I'll get a lot of special lower back exercises or a bad shoulder. Maybe you do a lot of shoulder exercises or even modifications to help you stay pain free. Um, but I still do the program. I just kind of modify it slightly for myself. Now what we do with our one-on-one -on -one coaching, whether it's like one-on-one -on -one coaching, coaching with me or our advanced coaching option is we will write in those exercises for you that are special extra exercises. We will write in your macros and take you on a progression. You'll get a file with checking pictures and track all your data. Um, but um, the real specialization is going to come based on your, uh, your physiology, meaning like we're going to look at your picture. We're going to look at your weight, maybe your body fat or your muscle mass. And we're going to try to dial in the fuel intake to help you progress. And that goes along with training. There's also uh, sections in there where we assign homework, where maybe there's extra cardio work we're assigning people, extra supplement protocols we're assigning people. But we don't give them like an entirely special one-on-one -on -one program. The, the program we steer people to is, is muscle anarchy um, because I think it's, it's the best muscle building program around if you're trying to be functional and put on muscle. Um, and, uh, and then beyond that, we can kind of specialize maybe some special exercises or some extra homework. Um, but I think the real ticket in, in the coaching is nutrition. Nutrition is the most valuable thing. That's what I've found for myself, like changing my nutrition, changing my supplement protocol, and just getting the training dialed into where I'm hammering the basics and the foundations well makes a huge difference. Um, okay, I'm down eight pounds, gonna keep crushing, getting my buddy to join. Nice, good. I, you know, like having a friend with you to do this stuff with is so fun. Um, it's also cool because like, especially right now, like I have Cammy, you may have seen her in some of our sessions, like she'll spot me, but she'll like put over pressure on the dumbbells and she'll count my tempos for me. And it's just fun to see somebody get like annihilated with a light weight and, and just, we like to challenge people in some really unique ways that m most people have not been exposed to before. So yeah, it's the best with a buddy. We actually had in Colorado, this was so funny. Um, I invited some of our local Muscle Anarchy Colorado crew to come train with me at Armbrust Pro Gym, which is the gym I train at. It's like a pro bodybuilding gym. And at first, you know, it was like three people showed up and then five. And then by the end of like a, a week or two, we had like 10 people showing up to this gym, like taking over the dumbbell rack, smashing the tempos, like screaming at each other. I thought we were gonna get kicked out of the gym. <laughs> we we're gonna get kicked out of the gym, so I had to put the kibosh on it. Um, but it's, it's, my point is it's, it's fun with the community. Now our community is online. So like, you know, get on the Muscle Anarchy uh, Facebook group because that is a fun group and and train you know I like drag Cam she loves Camille loves this hypertrophy stuff she'll tell you ah, I like to look good and feel good but like she wants to do everything that I'm doing because it's fucking fun and it works um, so yeah it's always fun guy or girl husband or wife it's always good what are your thoughts on um, regimen of Metcons followed with one of your 10 minute finishers. Yeah, that's a good combo. Like when we wrote those finishers book um, for a couple different contexts. So the finishers book we wrote is a list of a hundred different workouts that are 10 minutes long that are hypertrophy finishers. So kind of similar, like, you know, take the thing you just did at the end, like dumbbell shrugs into high pulls. That was about a 10 minute deal. So that would be an example of like maybe something you might see in a, in a finisher workout if you were trying to target shoulders or traps. Um, we wrote that for people who don't want to change their programming. So like if you're going to your gym and you love your affiliate and you just want to do CrossFit, but you're interested in getting like a little more hypertrophy in, you can pick a finisher to put at the end of your workout. And I also do the finishers like when I'm on the road because most of it is just some dumbbells and bands. So like it's great if you're in a hotel where you got like maybe up to a set of 50 pound dumbbells or limited time, you could pick two or three finishers and totally smash yourself um, with some really good hypertrophy work. So that's exactly how it's meant to be done. We write in the book the context of like, hey, you can do this after your crafts workouts, just stick, stick around for 10 minutes after class, pick a body part you want to grow and, uh, and hammer that stuff. And you can also combine it with like the functions you use that day in the workout. So like, if you know, if you did a workout with like a bunch of handstand pushups, you might do some extra shoulder work, like, you know, maybe the, uh, maybe the Arnold press reverse fly thing we did today as a finisher just to get some extra hypertrophy on that body part. Um, okay. Thanks for doing this. Thank you guys. Hey, thanks for tuning in, man. Like, uh, I'm looking at the names here and, and I know I've, I've seen some of you guys on our, um, 
on our uh, Muscle Energy Board. So thanks for tuning in, man. Keep keep coming. I'm, I'm going to be here every single day at 10 a.m. So um, and we got fun stuff coming up. So it's always like we're saying, like always better to train with a buddy. Come come train with me. We'll do this Q and A after. I wish I could see your faces and, and talk to you, but um, we'll also have some time for that in the future. But keep coming here. Stay consistent and uh, and, and thanks for joining us. We're honored to have you with us. Honestly, like I, I am constantly blown away and I'm not bullshitting you. Like I, I feel um, a, a level of responsibility and humility and just, and just feeling so lucky that I have access to you guys and I'm able to share this stuff with you um, because it's something that like, I just love it. Like I just love this stuff. That's it. Um, and, and the fact that you're interested and the fact that I'm able to have a business out of it is, is all a bonus. So thank you so much. And uh, we hope to see you next time. We'll be doing another workout Monday morning. It's going to be leg day. So get ready for legs. Dave Wilson out. Thanks, guys. Okay.